Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure, coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Beautiful uh, waves uh, yesterday here in, here in Oahu. I got to go tandem surfing with my wife. I promise I didn't snake anybody. I didn't drop in on anybody, so I don't have to go to confession after surfing for, for once in my life. But when we come back, we're going to be interviewing a surfing priest from Bozeman, Montana. Father Joseph Paddock will be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, God, uh, there's, a, there's a commandment, an order in the Old Testament that says, do not move the ancient boundaries. God has set boundaries uh, when, when he divided up the inheritance among the tribes. And God is big into setting boundaries and knowing where we cross the line and where we don't cross the line. One of the things that G.K. Chesterton said is that the thing about orthodoxy uh, kind of like you think about the walls of orthodoxy, uh, is that it may it lets good things run wild. But one of the things, if you look, just let's look at the look in the first, you know, book of the Bible in Genesis. God was very big into dividing things. He divided the light from the dark, for example. He he divided the water from the land. Um, and then when he made woman, he 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 took a rib out of Adam. He divided something from Adam and made it into a woman. And it seems like the world today is so busy trying to say, no, we're all the same thing. We can we can you know a, a man can be a, a woman, a woman can be uh, a man, and there and 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 all the lines are just being crossed. But God is very firm when He says, do not move the ancient boundaries, and to understand that there's a difference, there's a purpose, there's a reason, there's an order. To, to God's creation, and uh, when we when we fall out of that order, it's really like we're we're falling into sin. And today we're going to have with us as one of our, as our guest, Father Joseph Paddock. He's the pastor in uh, Bozeman, Montana, of the Resurrection University Parish there in Bozeman, the Bozeman Bobcats. And I had the pleasure of meeting Father Joe, Father Bryce Lundgren, and him came out and visited us here for a, a week or so, and. And I have to say, Father Joe, you're the best uh, surfing priest from Bozeman, Montana, that I've ever met. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah what a joy it was to, to come out there. My first time in Hawaii, and I, and I got to admit, uh, you know, Hawaii is one of the very few places I've ever been that was way better than, than advertised. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and most of the reason was, 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 of course, the hospitality we got. I was just out of this world. So... It was a lot of fun. It was great for um, us. Not, not only fun, but it was fun growing in the faith with, with you know, with you and with and Father Bryce and whatnot too. It was really, it was really awesome. Yeah, it was cool. We got to have mass right here in our home uh, when you guys would be celebrating mass and, and but you know the thing that was so cool. So Father Bryce and I, the first morning, you know, when you get here, you get here late, uh, in, usually in the day, and uh, you and Father Bryce show up and you're, he's wearing his cowboy hat and. And you're and you're standing there, and, and we went for a walk down uh, Kalakaua Avenue, and people are like, "Who are these guys?" You know, it's like you guys really stood out wearing your the men in black, you know, and all of that. And then the and next we were really white too, you know, in the winter here, you know, we don't have any tan, so we're like bright white. <laughs> and and Father Bryce is wearing his his cowboy boots and his and his hat. But then we went uh, in the morning. Father Bryce and I got coffee, and we went down across the street to Kai Coffee. You know, right on the beach there, and uh, who do we see swimming in the water and in the dark? Is you? Did you enjoy doing your laps and then in the ocean? It was really, really good. Uh, I, I did. I, I was a little bit intimidated at first, especially that open part. You know, when you have the wall next to you, but then that open part, I'm getting knocked around. But it was fun, and I, I, I think you told me I was like swimming for 45 minutes, and I, yeah. I usually swim for like 20, 25, and I didn't even notice. I was yeah, just yeah. Loving it. Yeah, we love we love sitting and watching you. Where we're relaxing, you're swimming, but it is true. And the ocean is so cool to swim, and we love to uh, snorkel. And we always bring a spear gun with us too, just in case we see something. But it kind of gives us, kind of looking for all of the. I mean, when you go swim right across, right outside in front of our house, 
you know that survival of the fittest isn't a valid thing. It's more survival of the weirdest, if it's anything, because you see so many unusual looking fish and sea creatures and probably ma most unusual thing people saw that week was father uh father joe paddock swimming uh at in the dark at early in the morning hours but we loved having you here tell us about the kind i mean y you know surfing is not is is hard enough but when we took you out surfing you seem to have a natural athletic ability but you just kept falling and we realized when you were done that the the fin was broken <laughs> That there was yeah, I, I didn't even know. Yeah there, was, <laughs> yeah, there was a reason why it kept going sideways on me. <laughs> yeah, the upper body, you know, I swim all the time. And so I have a decent upper body, you know, built for that swimming to, to move around and whatnot. But yeah, maneuvering that board. Um, I wish we would have noticed that earlier. But I did. I got that one. I got that one awesome run. Like my one claim to fame. I got rolled that wave all the way and was just. And, was it, really and then a few days later, we went. And, I, and I'm kind of struggling because. Father uh, Bryce, I think, is more of a stand-up paddler type, and then you're more of the surfer type. Of course, I stand-up paddle surf. I do kind of mix them together. But we went out, and as we went out the next day, the next time we went out a few days later, the surf kind of came up while we were paddling out. And we went way out there, and I was kind of coaching you guys on how to stand-up paddle. And then I said, let's go in, and, and, and Father Bryce held onto our paddles, and you and I went to the surf zone. And then I never saw you again. I caught a wave. And I'm looking for you, trying to find you. And you had, and and I, I looked at one wave coming towards you, and I thought, I hope he gets that wave. And apparently, you did, and you rode it a long, 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 long way. Just on my belly, though. I was too. I, I was going to try to get up, but I was just so tired from trying to move around. I just kind of, I just kind of, I, I I did ride it in, but I wasn't standing up. <laughs> but isn't it something to be have that rush of being carried by the by the wave? Yeah, you feel that power and it just moving you. It's really, it's 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 tremendous. Don't yeah. you think it's true? There's an application there spiritually that you can't move. Uh, you know, to to really to be in God's will, you 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 need to move in the Holy Spirit. You can't you can't surf without a wave, and you really can't uh, move in the Lord without the power of the Holy Spirit. Not by might, not by strength, but by my my spirit, says the Lord. You know, don't you, is, have you experienced that in your own life too? The surge of the Holy Spirit moving you. Uh, yes, yes, definitely at times. And, you know, as you were talking, something just, I don't think I it registered until you were just talking, but I know that uh, you were really emphasizing, you know, you have to have some momentum. You can't just, oh, there's a wave, stand up. I mean, you have to be, um, and it's true in terms of the, the, we have to be consistent and persistent in our prayer life. And yes. that's kind of, you know, building up the momentum. And then, and then the wave comes. It's not always there, but when those waves come, like they did that day we were out there, Carpe diem, right? Now it's time yeah. to take advantage. It was um, juicy. So there, are, there definitely are those moments. You know, we just, you know, went through Holy Week not too long ago. And that was one of those moments when they, the wave comes yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Jump on. It was so beautiful. But it is true. I think that's exactly the way I describe it is um, that we really shouldn't even call it surfing. We should call it paddling because you're spending 95% of your time paddling and 5% of the time surfing. And that's the way it is, I think, in the Holy Spirit, too, is you're, you, if, you, if you don't spend that time in prayer. And people tell me, so what should, what should I do at the gym to get in shape to go surfing? And I go, you know, there's no substitute for time in the water. You had the paddling strength because you're a swimmer. And, and to try to say, well, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that, but but not spend time in prayer. I'm going to follow this program. I'm going to do do this project. I'm going to go to this school. I'm going to get this theology degree. But if you're not spending time in prayer, you're not going to catch the wave of the Spirit. And so it's kind of a you know beautiful and powerful lesson. And you and you did you, but I but I but I was just so hoping that you caught that wave. And I saw I saw you I saw the initial surge, but it was so big that I couldn't see what happened after that. Because in Hawaii, you ride for. It's probably a minute and a half ride that you had on just that one wave. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. It's not just a quick ten second. You get a good good ride. Yeah. So I think we've ruined your life now. Uh, <laughs> you, you you be coming back every year. We hope you know to uh, to visit us and and to and to surf because now that you've got that basic whatever that is, um, you 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 can do it. You've got the feeling for it. What would what do you remember? What the first lesson is I gave you on surfing. Very most important thing uh, to oh, remember. Uh, yeah, keep uh, keep uh, keep your uh, board, keep your surfboard pointed out toward the sea as you're paddling out. But when you're catching the wave, and you and you stand up, what, do you remember what I said to you? The most important thing. I'll remind you, and you see if you I, if, if I don't. You remember. I remember the positioning said, of the feet. Yeah, up yeah, you did that. No, but I said don't fall. 
And it, and the thing about surfing is uh, so many people, when they feel like they're going to fall, they just give up and they fall. And so I know oh. it seems almost funny, but when you're surfing and you feel like you're going to fall, don't fall. And that's a spiritual lesson too. You know, resist the devil and he will flee. Don't give up. Persevere. Stay the course. That's, it's something in skiing too that, I, you know, I, you know, you get scared and then you want to fall down. But if you just kind of trust, I, I trust the equipment more so. Than yes. I, and, and, and just trust that like this surfboard or these skis are designed to do this. So if you yes. don't do anything stupid, but just trust it and just, and just ride it out. Yeah. And that goes. So I've, I've definitely learned that uh, on the slopes as well. And that goes right back to our teaching and the, the doctrine, the teaching, the moral teaching, the doctrine, the sacraments of the church, trust the equipment, go with what go with the, uh, the, what the Lord has provided, and everything will right itself. We're talking with Father Joseph Paddock, the best surfing priest in all of Bozeman, Montana. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wasdick Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bears Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to thank Catholic Radio in South Carolina the listeners and the donors for keeping our show on the air, the, uh, air in the Diocese of Charleston. Catholic Radio in South Carolina is celebrating 20 years with the EWTN radio network. Catholic Radio in South Carolina is the resource for Catholic content, apologetics, and church teaching. May God bless all of you who listen and donate regularly. And again, thank you. So I just want to say a big shout out to Catholic Radio in South Carolina. I don't do this for a lot of stations, but... This station in Charleston was one of the first stations to carry my show when I first went on with EWTN. So we're stoked and we congratulate them and thank you to the listeners and to the donors. We are today with his father, Joseph Paddock, and uh, we've been talking a little bit about how um, he's the best uh, surfer in all of Bozeman, Montana, the best Catholic priest who surfs in all of Bozeman, Montana. But can we uh, can we talk story just a little bit, Father, about, uh, you know, your, your own faith? We love to hear the stories of, of people's journey with the Lord? What what adventure has God had you on? How did you, you know, start with us in your youth? Were you raised Catholic or how, what, what was your, what was all of that like mm -hmm. for you? Sure. Well, uh, I, well I, I am a cradle Catholic. Yes, I was born into an Irish Catholic family in Anaconda, Montana, about an hour and a half from where Anaconda is such a cool place. Such a great <laughs> yeah, place. Yeah, you, uh, you've been there. You actually have yeah. some roots, I think. I had right? some relatives there. Yeah, some of my yeah. mom's relatives. Yeah. 
pretty amazing uh, in Hawaii talking about anaconda stories, um, really good stuff. But yeah, so I was born and raised there. I was raised in a single family, my mother and a sister two years older than me, but she had a big family. Uh, both of her parents were one of 10. And in a town like Anaconda, that means you're related to half the town. Um, so Catholicism was always, a, 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 I was going to say a big part. I mean, we went to mass, but uh, a lot of times that was it. Now, with my mother and my sister and whatnot, sometimes we would do some more, but um, at family functions and whatnot, we didn't pray before meals. And so it was kind of like, kind of like what society tells you to do, you know, keep it, keep it at home, keep it in the closet. Well, nowadays they don't even tell you that, but back then, because you believe whatever you want, but just don't bring it out in the public. It kind of. Right. Uh, but everyone, everybody went to mass. Well, you know, there's a nice know. spot right here in my shelf for Jesus. I'll just put him right there. Exactly. You know, exactly. Put, him, put him on the shelf. That way, that, way, that way he's harmless and they really have no idea how dangerous Jesus is. Right, right. So, um, it, but we went to like CCD classes and whatnot. The Catholic schools were long closed down. You know, my mm. mother went through right towards the end before they closed the Catholic schools there. So I had all secular schools and um, not great catechesis, which is pretty typical. I'm 46 now. So pretty much everybody this my age, I mean, it's very rare that they have a firm catechesis just because of what was going on at the time. But nevertheless, um, definitely I've always, you know, recognized myself as a Catholic, even though I didn't always live like a very good Catholic. But so, um, you know, I really liked sports when I was younger, but in my town, uh, you get to a certain level where it depends on which side of town you live on, whether you're going to play on the team or not, because the certain guys' fathers are coaching the team. I wasn't on the, wrong, was the right side of that, and so I, I kind of got discouraged. I should have persisted, but I didn't. Um, so I went, you know, some different paths. But I that's a big deal. Field. That's a big deal, though. I mean, that 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 what you just said, that's a huge hurt. It was, and there's there's a number of hurts that kind of, uh, well, I didn't have, you know, uh, a, a, fa a true fatherly presence. My mother's brothers and her father, you know, tried to fill in that gap, but there's just, where, I mean, where, they're great guys, but there's no substitute. Well, where was your dad? Um, where was your dad? He moved away. I mean, they were actually scheduled to get divorced the day I was born, uh, December 22nd, 1976. That didn't happen. Oh, Six man. Months. Yeah, my mother was living with her parents. You know, they were separated when I was, you know, in the latter stages of when I, you know, when I was oh my God. latter stages in her womb. And then six months into my life, they were d divorced. And then I don't know when it happened. I was so young, but I know from the farthest I can remember, he lived in Billings, you know, which is farther east and then all the way out in South Dakota. And, um, you know, I don't want to bash the guy, especially on a, on a program like this, but he was, a, he was just a distant presence. Um, mm. And so, yeah, and there were a number of different things in my upbringing that you're right, they, they were hurt. And I didn't even, I didn't even realize until like, you know, maybe six or seven years ago, how much this impacted my life, kind of a not good enough mentality that a lot of men suffer from. Um, but yeah, so there was that hurt with the, you know, with the sports. Um, and then I started playing music and you know, I played the saxophone and I was pretty good at that. And I was, yeah. always, pretty good. Yeah. I was always pretty good in school. Um, and so I thought, okay, well, that's how I'm going to, that's going to be my way to, because we lived in low income housing and it wasn't, it wasn't great conditions there. And and I thought, well, I'll, I'll study him because I seem to be pretty, you know, seem to be doing better than most. And that'll be my way to kind of uh, get me and my family out of this. I, you know, I, I know that sounds silly, but that's what I was thinking as a 12, 15 year old. And then I started hanging out with uh, some people. I mean, I'm still friends with these guys, you know, to this to this day, many of them, but um, they weren't pursuing virtue, should I say. We, <laughs> we, you know, there was a lot of drinking and smoking and um, and that that kind of stuff going on. I would always get my schoolwork done first, but then then we would go and party and um, you know, I had a lot of fun. But what I didn't realize is I was hiding from the wounds. I was hiding from the pain that you you very quickly uh, sniffed out. Uh, and again, I didn't realize this till decades later, what was going on. Um, but it it really kind of isolated me from who I was. Now I'm still going to mass because my mom, she would always ask, you know, she had questions, what was the gospel about? You know, <laughs> which priest was it? Because we had two churches and my sister and I would try to game the system. We would say, oh yeah, we went down to St. Pete's and she said, oh yeah, well who's... <laughs> we would just, we would just grab the, uh, we would grab the church um, bulletin and then leave, <laughs> stand in the back and then ditch. Ooh, that see, we, we, we shouldn't be giving, we us. shouldn't be giving anybody any hints. Yeah, you, you, you were smarter than us. Um, but so I was still, I still going to mass and whatnot, um, but, and my family wasn't too happy with a lot of the choices I was making, but mm. I persisted. I was kind of a rebellious youth. Um, 
And then I ended up down here, Montana State. Uh, I did. I decided to come down here to, to go to the, the, the Montana State Buffaloes. Oh, no, no Bobcats. Yeah. <laughs> At least you, but you didn't say the very offensive word. Oh, what, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? I won't pronounce was it. it. I'll, I'll tell you that the so-called <laughs> institution is located in Missoula, Montana. Yes. But I won't. I won't tell you the name of the school or the or the mascot. Oh, okay. I thought that was their mascot. We won't we won't bring that up. Yes, I, I'll, I'll 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 plug my ears. If Those you people in Missoula, they don't know. We don't even want to bring up that town. <laughs> <laughs> so I came down here and uh, studied chemical engineering, and I kind of continued my partying ways. But I, um, it was a fundamental shift. You know, most of my friends, you know, back in Anaconda were. Um, really had no faith. They might have been baptized Christians, and but they weren't, um, and they weren't interested in college and pursued other paths. Um, so I came down here, and I, in many ways, I was kind of uh, it was kind of a big jump for me. Um, although it's not that far from home, you know, I could still go home and visit my family and friends. But so I I uh, made it through uh, the chemical engineering. I got a bachelor's in chemical engineering here. That's so and cool. And I actually got I got actually got confirmed right out there it used to be the old church um mm -hmm. it's our social hall now my my freshman year at montana state i went i rebelled of course in high school i didn't finish the uh, cycles i think it was called back then uh, the confirmation prep the last year i just couldn't take it because i was the only one amongst all the people from the, like the other side of town kind of a thing so i told my family i'll get confirmed when i go to college and they had zero percent confidence that i would but i did i got confirmed and um continue to very, very nominally practice the faith. You know, I was going, I I didn't even really understand the difference between mortal sin and venial sin. And so, I mean, I was receiving the sacraments for many, many years and shouldn't mm -hmm. have been, but I, it was, it truly was ignorance. I, I I mean, I knew that the things that I was doing were wrong, but I was conditioned by the kind of cafeteria Catholicism of the time mm. to think, oh, Jesus is, oh, it's okay. Uh, so anyway, I graduated from Montana State um, 2000. And uh, then I went on to Nebraska. I went and worked for Cargill Incorporated as a chemical engineer. Um, that's when things, that, kind of an inflection point finally started to happen. I, when I first got out there, I had my best friend from here moved out there. He worked for Cargill. We had a lot of fun together. I had family members that were in Omaha as well. I lived in the Omaha. Um, and um, so things were pretty good for a while. Kind of the same, similar kind of a lifestyle. But then people start getting married, moved away. And then all of a sudden I'm hanging around with the a bunch of the locals and I'm realizing that I don't really have a lot in common with these people. I mean, they're nice people, but the only reason that we're hanging around is we like to party together. Mm. So I started thinking, maybe I should try to meet some Catholics, you know? <laughs> and I know it sounds ridiculous, but this I was like, yeah, the light bulb went off, you know? Maybe I should mm. look for some people that have similar interests to me. So at the parish that I was in there, I joined the Young Adults Club and then I joined the Knights of Columbus and and that was really a good turning point for me. And then I ended up mm. uh, applying to grad school, went to the University of Notre Dame. And well, that, we, that was we'll, another big... Oh. We'll, we'll take a break right here. Okay. I, I always, you know, I'm always supposed to say who I'm talking to, Father Joseph Paddock. I introduced you at the beginning of the session. Now it's been 10 minutes after I got to, to interject. We're talking with Father Joseph Paddock. He's the, the pastor at Resurrection University Parish in Bozeman, Montana, and the best surfer surfing priest in all of Bozeman, uh, and uh, we'll be back. Well, Bob, Father, where can they find you? What's the best way for people to reach you? Well, I mean, you know, our parish website, you know, there we have contact information, pastor at resurrectionbozeman.org. Yeah, check. It's the easiest way. Okay, we'll be, we'll be back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up notches. It said gunfighters filed notches on their pistol grips for every man they killed. That's mostly a myth. Well, anywho, the whole idea of keeping track of what we have accomplished as if to prove our worth in life is one of man's more vain endeavors. Whether it's the number of cows on our spread, the cars we drive, or the tally of likes and friends we have on Facebook, it all makes for nothing but a hill of beans, at least in God's eyes. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong in taking pleasure in your accomplishments, but we've got to remember who gave us the ability to do such things. Sides on a grading curve, compared to some folks, my count is seriously low. However, Jesus did give serious commands for us to do good works. Fact is, he said that the good things we do or don't do will validate or not our eternal destiny 
Yep, right there in Matthew 25. But good works aren't meant for showing off. In fact, if we do show them off, the good book says we've lost whatever reward we could have had. The gift of God's Son to us and the life He gave on Calvary's tree weren't cause of anything we did. Only notches on the cross count in the end. We can earn God's applause. Jesus provided it for us through the cross. can only be had by simple faith and a tip of the hat. Thank you. So I've advised we all quit notching our guns to show off to earn God's favor. Won't work. Never has. Never will. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know what? If you don't have plans to be in, in, in uh, Melbourne Beach, Florida on May 19th to the 21st, you're missing out on the big uh, Man Cave meetup. We're having all the men for the Man Cave and any, any men that want to join to come out with us for... Uh, May 19th to the 21st. And if you have a son that's confirmation age or older, uh, bring him. But this is a no mam's land type of uh, uh, event. But this is not your mother's uh, Catholic retreat. Uh, the way we're going to do this is, I think, more the way Jesus actually did it. Actually, um, some to some degree, we're going to be having uh, some good conversation down at the beach. Instead of me teaching or people teaching, we're going to dialogue with each other. We're going to go into different areas and just go deep with each other and learn from each other and uh, and carry ourselves into a, maybe deeper areas than we normally would. But that always is enabled when you're having a cigar or maybe a shot of whiskey. So uh, we'll be having uh, we'll be having our beach time, our early morning liturgy of the hours. We'll have mass. We're going to be having some surf, some beach rodeo going on. So we invite you to the men, women. Listen to this. You've been asking us how can we get our, your men more involved. Uh, go to deepadventure.com and up above you'll click on the May 19th to the 21st um, Man Cave Meetup, Melbourne Beach, Florida. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's, it's, there's nothing else like it. So we invite you to, to do that. And while they're there, if the men want to consider joining the Man Cave and our Bear School of Manliness, uh, something the men go through together. We all go through this three-year curriculum, and then the fathers also uh, lead their sons through it. Or you can join the Mama Bears at the at the website too. But come to come to the Man Cave Meetup, Melbourne Beach, May nineteenth. We are uh, talking with Father Joseph Paddock, uh, the best surfing priest in all of Bozeman, Montana, and we're talking story a little bit about his, uh, getting to that point. You know, with so many people, Father, they go through that that or, or they've been raised in the Lord. I remember. My story is somewhat similar. I was a junior in college, and actually, I've been I've been living a real righteous life. I had never I don't even know if I'd ever even had a drink yet, maybe a, a, a sip, but I didn't smoke, didn't drink, didn't party. I was a virgin. I kept my I was I was trying to do all the right things, but it was like there was no um, there you know just doing all the right things, but uh, you know the cardinal virtues. But but I, I really wanted to have a relationship with God, and when I was a junior in college, end of my junior year, I was like, well. If God, if you're not going to really be a father to me, if you're just going to be like a dad that sends child support checks, then 
how do I know you're even there? I'm just going to, you know, maybe it is sex, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, or wine, women, and song, as they used to say, you know? And so, but you were at that point where you had kind of lived a little bit on the, on the edge, and you now were, um, you went to, how is it that you went, ended up in Notre Dame? Well, I wanted to switch gears. You know, I had I was a chemical engineer, and I, and I thought, you know, maybe I'll get an MBA, and I always wanted to kind of move back, make my way back to Montana. And I thought if I get a master's degree, I'll have a little bit more leverage, you know, in terms of yeah. what jobs that I that I that I select. And so, so and I applied at different places. And I, you know, being from an Irish Catholic family, I was always a huge Notre Dame fan, and I kind of it was kind of a dream for me to, to go there. So. Yeah, so I was there two wonderful years there, and that's where I really became comfortable, at, you know, outside of the privacy of my own home, being a Catholic. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's the University of Our Lady. You know, you have the dome. She's on top of the dome. And yeah. You have a crucifix in every classroom, and they have, like, daily mass in the business calls. They have a chapel there. And, oh, know, that's so cool. And there were a lot of other, there were a lot of other people there that were, that were Catholics. But, I mean, I had friends there that were Muslims, you know, but people were just more comfortable, like, living their faith there. Yeah. more generally but i did have some good catholic friends that i met and so that was i didn't realize at the time but in retrospect that was a that was a big kind of a, uh, one of the watershed moments for me and just like it's okay to be catholic you know talking to you here it's okay to walk down the street and be catholic I don't well have, i, 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 I i've had that it. same i've had the same experience at notre dame it's just like going to one of the football games you know and okay now game's over 30 minutes from now mass is starting so boogie yeah. over to that one i forget what chapel that is but you know that's just part of it just we, we play football and then we go to mass you know so it's it's kind of like just the, it's just a your catholicism your faith is all totally integrated into into your whole life but it, well, tell us then where where did you come to that point of pers- real personal conversion and in and, and your conversion you're you're moving towards a priesthood okay so I'll, I'll kind of fast forward the story but from notre dame i was in southern california for um about uh, a year and a half wyanemi beach which of course you know you knew about yeah that one too. right um and uh, then I ended up in Seattle working for Amazon.com, which had it, w- it wasn't even on my radar. I was a biotech guy, and I ended up in Amazon.com uh, and Sacred Heart Parish there, right near the Seattle Center. Um, and I just the, both priests there were they were redemptorist priests. They were really good, really Father Harry and Father Joseph. And I got involved with the young adults group there, and I finally got involved with uh, as an extraordinary minister of the Eucharist and as a as a lector there too. Um, and so. Things are, and, and I started going to confession pretty regular. I think maybe monthly or so when I was there. Um, so now I'm starting to take my faith pretty seriously. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I then Amazon sent me down to the Reno area. I lived in Sparks, kind of like East Reno in Immaculate Conception Parish. That's where, boom, that's where things really crystallized. I, you know, Father um, Norm down there was he was a really good uh, influence on me. Um, he really encouraged us to listen to Catholic radio. He was like an evangelist for Ave Maria radio. And so I started listening instead of listening to Led Zeppelin and Bob Marley and Metallica on the way. I had to drive about 30 minutes to get to work. I listened to, I can't remember that there was a certain praise God name. for Catholic radio. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was a big deal. And so he had me, he, he got me, he started going to adoration on Thursdays and then he had a Bible study. He got me on the finance council and I continued the ministries that I had started in Seattle. And I just started to make a lot of good friends there and just, you know, good Catholic friends. Some of them were older, some of them were younger. There was a good, it wasn't, a, they didn't have a, a, a young adults group in the parish, but they had one kind of in the Reno area more generally. Started hanging out with um, with a number of these people. And so now the Lord's really starting to work in my life. The moment that kind of, it was, that kind of changed everything. My mother came down to visit and she's a very pious, you know, very devout uh, daily mask or all the devotions, you know, rosary rallies, um, you name it. She's She's one of those that knows all the priests. Father Stu, you've seen the movie. She's really good buddies with Father Stu. No kidding. Um, wow. Yeah, he was in Anaconda for two years before he went to Helena. That's that right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And she knew him. I mean, she was really good friends with him. Um, so she comes down to visit and, of course, wants to go to Daily Mass. I don't remember if I ever went to Daily Mass before, but okay, you know, we'll go. She knows I know Father Norm. She wants to meet the priest, of course. <laughs> so we go and, we, and we're shooting, you know, chewing the fat with with um, with Father Norm after mass. And we go to walk out the door, and he just said, "You know what? You know what? Why don't you make a priest out of him or something?" I remember looking at him and just laughed. I was like, "That's ridiculous." You know, he, he, obviously it's just a joke. Well, so my mom goes back to Montana, and um, moms are dangerous. Oh yes, when they oh, yes. pray, their yeah. prayers are dangerous. Yeah, and she, so she just. Uh, well, a, a couple other numerous, like the three or four other people in the parish started mentioning, "Hey, have you thought about becoming a priest?" I never thought about becoming a priest. 
what are you talking about? So I dismissed it. Well, then Father Stu and some other people back here in Montana started mentioning these kind of things to my mom, and they don't really know me at all. Um, and then I thought, oh, boy, something weird's going on there. And then Father Norm, all this happened within like six or seven weeks, so maybe ten, nine or ten times. Oh, my goodness. Know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. The and call. then Father Norm, one the more call. time. After, the call. The call of the, the call. Lord. And then yeah. after a Sunday Mass, Father Norm said something else as I was leaving. And I went out the front door and snuck in the side door and grabbed these materials that I conveniently ignored on the priesthood. I didn't want him to see me, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I went home that day, and I opened up. They were like these leaflets. And I was reading through these, and I, was, I just remember sitting on, on my couch, and I was just like, it was like I was just getting pounded with waves of peace. Praise and God. Praise um, God. And it wasn't a scary thing, but I just I couldn't get up. I was just I was I, and I was like, wow, this is wild. Mm -hmm. And I remember praying to the Lord. This seems it seemed like a logical impossibility. I thought I might be losing my mind, but I said, Lord, if this you seems like you want me to go this way. And so anyway, I kept knocking on the door, calling vocation directors, and I ended up coming back to the, the Diocese of Helena here in Montana. And, um, the uh, Bishop uh, Thomas at the time sent me out to Mount Angel in Oregon. Yeah, and six years, six years there. Um, I went straight through. Praise God, I didn't have any. Some a lot of times guys will have a break or something, but the Lord just We're, guided me straight through. And and now I'm almost uh, almost six years uh, complete in the priesthood. Well, we love your we love your priesthood. And by the way, you went a little bit at the time I think with Father Bryce too, didn't you? At that seminary, yes. weren't you? Yeah, but he you was know, in the he was in he was in the college when I got to uh, when I got to Mount Angel. But we we love up. your we love your priesthood. We love your priesthood. What you brought here to our home during those those uh, those week or ten days that you guys were here. We just love your priesthood. One of the things I remember, Father, is that you're very much into the liturgy. You know, I, you're teaching me about the, the, the liturgical calendar. And about feast and, and 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 fasting, and I remember one night, it's like, oh, it's a feast day. I got to go down and get some ice cream, and you went down to the Hagen Dazs and made sure you had your feast. And oh, yeah. I have a kind of a confession. I don't even know what this is. I was speaking in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts, this last year, this on St. Patrick's Day on a Friday, oh, and wow. they go, oh, we're going to take you to an Irish pub, and I go, oh, right, bangers and mash. And the moment they said Irish pub, I forgot it was a Friday and it was Lent, right? So I'm sitting there, and they gave me bangers and mash. And I noticed everybody else is eating kind of different things than I would order normally at an Irish place. And they're like a fish this or, you know, a fish that. And the Monsignor's here and the priest is here and all these holy men of God are there. And, and I'm nibbling around my bangers. I haven't eaten any bangers. I've mashed potatoes and the vegetables. And then finally I go for the bangers, and no one said a thing about you know the sausage. No one said a thing about it. And uh, and then I go home, and I go, oh, my gosh, it's it's uh, – it's Lent and it's a Friday, but then I found out because it's a feast day, a St. Patrick's feast day on a Friday in Lent, the bishop in that area had given everybody um, permission to do something, some other a sort dispensation. of it's <laughs> yeah. a dispensation. Yeah. So I dodged the bullet, but uh, yeah, it was pretty sketchy. But I was thinking about you, how the, the liturgy. Yeah, this is pa St. Patrick's Day. I got a, I got a feast, and then I realized later, oh, it's a Friday. We're talking with Father Joseph Paddock from uh, Bozeman, Montana. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, 
including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station while well, you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha welcome back to the bear wasnick adventure long ride home with bear wasnick season four all filmed in hawaii is being released to the network right now as we speak it'll be airing sometime soon if you want to find out more about the show Go to deepadventure.com, subscribe uh, where it says, I think it says, uh, subscribe to our new weekly newsletter. You get this, these, uh, you'll, you'll hear all about when that's going to be released, how you can have access to it right now if you want to. And uh, you'll be getting the, the weekly video version, the YouTube version of our radio show before it even airs. So, and a lot of other good stuff. If you go to, like, that's what we like to call it, stuff. If you go to our deepadventure.com and sign up for our newsletter. And um, go to Deep Adventure, go to Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel and subscribe there. We've got about 1,500 videos there. The whole catechism is up there. We, we teach for two and a half years. We taught every morning for about 15 minutes uh, down by the beach. And we went all the way through the catechism. We have all of our radio shows, the video version, and, and a lot more. So go to, go to deepadventure.com and just get involved. We're talking with Father Joseph Paddock. He's the pastor of Resurrection uh, University Parish in Bozeman, Montana. I want to go a little bit deep with you, Father. We, something happened when we were here. We had a conversation, Father Bryce and you and I, and suddenly my heart just went really deep, a uh, real love for you. We were talking about how when we get to heaven, Father Bryce and I were saying, oh, we're going to have work to do. We're going to be, we're going to be, um, you know, there's going to be, there's going to be, you know, like the, because the Bible says every now, even now, Jesus said, even the Father and I, we work, and um, and we talked about how we're going to be uh, having, we'll be in the presence of the Lord, but there'll be things that we'll be doing, and then you were stressing, no, 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 we're just going to be before the face of the Father, and we kind of talked theologically, and then it was kind of cool because then Father Bryce said, well, we don't need to talk anymore about this. And then the next day, as I was, I was just praying about it, it, I just, way deep in my heart, I felt this feeling for you of your own uh, father not being in your life. And I was thinking about the scripture verses, the scripture verse in Revelations that says there'll be silence in heaven for the period of half hour and God will wipe away, the Father will wipe away every tear from our eyes. And how this man, Father Joseph, named after a father, you know, St. Joseph, how, yes, you would want to be face-to-face -face with your father because you, you didn't have that as a child and, uh, and how that is exactly what your work would be. That's exactly what you would want to be is just to be, be with your dad in heaven. And my heart just broke. And I realized that that same spirit that you carry with you and that desire to see the father face-to-face -face you're bringing into your own priesthood and how you how the year a father to your own flock. I just wanted to say that to you. And now you're and now you're in a situation where you're fathering uh, people in a on a, college campuses are so liberal. Uh, as you're fathering them, you know how a father will correct his children, you know, love them and nurture them. But then there's a time of correction. Are you finding challenges there as you begin to, as you begin to as you draw the line and say this is the teaching of the church this is the the, the moral teaching and uh, what are you finding there we have, this is our last segment so i'm not leaving you a lot of time to talk about it mm -hmm. well you know with the students uh, at least the ones that are regular to come now uh i think they're they're thirsty they're aspiring um they want to know the truth because mm -hmm. they know that what they're getting in a lot of other circumstances isn't the truth and so they want something firm to hang on to now they may struggle to to be able to fully embrace it and then we we have the sacraments and we have discussions and spiritual direction and so with the students at least thus far i mean we want to tap into a much bigger chunk of the of the you know the the people that are out there but 
I haven't had, you know, too much resistance in terms of, you know, this, these are the teachings. And I have, a, you know, I have a parochial vicar this year and he's, you know, he's really solid too. But with some of the parishioners, you know, you and I, you know, I've been talking about, uh, you know, some of them uh, that have been, especially been around for a while, um, a little bit more resistance to to embracing the fullness of, of the truth. And, and so just, you know, engaging with them in discussion and, you know, sometimes I can be a little brash, and, but I'm not, a, I'm also not afraid to, to, to put the truth out there. I think we have to, I think a lot of guys are scared to do that because you know, you know that what's going to happen, but I'd rather err on the side of, you know, let's put it out there. And I try to do it in a, in a, in a loving way. And I'm, you know, my homilies are recorded. People can go and listen to them. And I think by and large, people think that I do share the truth with charity. I'm not perfect. I, you know, I know that, um, some people, you know, don't appreciate what I say or, or the way that I say it, but but then I'm open for discussion. Okay, you didn't like that. You want to you want to have a discussion. Okay, well here's where I'm coming from. Here's where the church is coming from, and allow them to vocalize and express themselves. And a lot of times, you know, we find a place that we can be in the middle. We we form a relationship mm -hmm. as opposed to because um, you're having a our, dialogue now at a diatribe. Yeah. But this is what our culture says, right? Yeah, you keep pounding until but, somebody until you knock the other person down. But no, we right. want to enter into enter into a relationship. So that's that's what undergirds what I'm trying to accomplish here. There's a difference between freedom and anarchy, and it seems like in this day, people want they mistake the two. Freedom is really the ability, the power to do uh, what God has ordered us to do. I don't mean ordered like He said you better do this, but I mean the or, the way God has created us and our talos, our our purpose the way that we should go, the way that we're designed to go. And then we t then we try to go into all many different directions. I was saying at the beginning, do not remove the, at the beginning of the show, do not move the ancient boundaries. And that one of the first things God did in the book of Genesis was to divide things, to distinguish between this is this and this is this, and they're not the same, you know? And so what, what are the two or three things that you're, you're focused on that you find some uh, resistance and uh, that you're having these dialogues about? Well, certainly, you know, the moral teachings of the church, you start talking about abortion and contraception, and, and some people just really, you know, our, our cultural kind of, uh, our, you know, our culture conditions them to, to kind of go crazy. Um, but I, but, you know, I gave a homily in January that really got a number of people riled up, but I, my, my main point was we have to do something about this. 63 million children have died. 2,300 children are being killed every single day. This is totally unacceptable. Right. Um, we have to do something. It's not just going to, a few more Hail Marys probably isn't going to get the job done. The Lord wants us to pray, but we need to act. And what would you, you say know? to do? What would, how, what did you ask them to act? How would they, what, what can people do? Well, I didn't, I, what can people I, I combined do? Four, four kind of controversial issues together, which is maybe a little more than I should have. Well, what were they? Go ahead. Well, it was abortion, contraception. I touched on immigration and, um, <laughs> was was, did fun. the transgender issue come up at all? Well, oh, yeah, yeah I, I barely touched on that. I just, I just, and my language probably wasn't great, but I just talked about, you know, look at some of the garbage that, that they're giving our kids. I, I use the word garbage that they're giving our kids in, in our schools and they're confusing our children. And we can't allow this to continue. It's not going to end well. And then after each one of these, I just said, what are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. The same thing with the border. I didn't. People think that I said I hate immigrants. I didn't know. I didn't say anything like that. I said, look, we've had 2.5 million people come across the border in the last 12 months. We, we can't handle that. We have an obligation to, to, to the, uh, a preferential option for the poor to help people. Yes. Yeah. But there's also terrorists that are coming across the border. They're bringing all these, all the fentanyl. There's all these overdoses. It, go, it goes back to that, that scripture verse I quoted, you know, don't move the ancient boundary. There's a reason why there's boundaries. Yeah, and so yeah, we need to have some structure. We need, obviously, we need to help people that are worse off than we are. But that doesn't mean we, you know, go to the way other end of the spectrum. Just, you know, no, no structure at all. That's obviously not going to work. And I didn't get into this, but I've seen the migrant camps. I've been to some of these places, and a lot of these people—they're tragic. Man, it's, it's tragic. They're not. Yeah, they're not living in luxury. I can guarantee. Yeah, that. yeah, um, it's a real tragedy. And then, and then contraception. What I touched on is, I mean, it's just, it's. Destroying our families. It's. I mean, look at all the single mothers. I mean, look at all the. I mean, just so much. 
um, hurt that well abortion and contraception are kind of in they're, they're like they're, they're the same they're, they're the same thing they're just two right. different ends of the spectrum humana vitae exactly. had it right um you know the, the 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 free love the whole free love thing let men let men just you know um as as saint john paul ii wrote um, love and responsibility, they go together. You don't have sex without responsibility, without, as we say in Hawaii, kuleana, stewardship. If you're going to make love to a woman, you, you, um, you marry her first and you, and you um, care for her and you, and you care for the, the child that you may bring into the world. We've, we've kind of run out of time. I may, I'm sure we're, sure we're going to have you back. Father Joseph, how can people find you again? Just go to our website, resurrectionbozeman.org, uh, and you can you can find me on there. My email address, pastor at Resurrection uh, Bozeman. I'd uh, be happy to uh, host you here if you come to Bozeman. It's a popular spot for people to come. All kinds Bozeman's of activities. awesome, awesome place. Yeah. The awesome yeah. town, just an awesome town. Um, yeah, and we want to invite you. Uh, maybe there may be a couple young men who have listened that may want to reach out to you about, uh, maybe they're wondering about the priesthood, and to, to maybe you could kind of uh, help guide them in the right direction. Where they can Please get more do. information. Yeah, I mean, I was I was a total knucklehead back in the days, and I, I was I was well, amazed. Well, you know, Father, I'm going to gonna say you know. some people say you you say you used to be a knucklehead. Some people kind of. <laughs> no, we love you. We love you, Father Joe, and and we hope you can be coming back to Hawaii every year. We'd love to have you back, um, but we got we got to roll. So we're talking with Father Joseph Paddock. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure, and as we always sign off here, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much. What a beautiful opportunity. Thank you, Father. God bless you, Bear. Thank you, Father. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.